a prequel to a prequel. I don't think I'm ever gonna say that again. Okay, before I get into this video, stick around for the end after I give my grade because I'm going to be addressing some minor stuff that happened in this movie that relates to this film and relates to the Conjuring uh, universe. So stick around if you wanna see that. So Annabelle is directed by David Sandberg and it tells the story of how a family lost their seven-year-old daughter in a tragic car accident. Years down the road, the father of the dead daughter is now welcoming this uh, sister Charlotte and these six orphanage kids and you know welcoming into their house and you know letting them spend a few nights there it seems like a nice house to live in but once uh this little girl janice finds this little doll in this creepy room everything starts to go down south and it gets really really creepy no i was really really excited to see this film because in the movie animal the first movie we never really got to learn more about the doll it was just kind of, you know, there. But in here, I felt like we needed more information and we definitely did. We learned so much more about it all and the whole ish history about Annabelle. And I gotta say, this movie was really scary and terrifying. On my way home, I was driving through some woods after I dropped home my front end. Man, that was, uh, you know, it was quite scary right there too because I was not looking in the woods at all. I was not trying to, you know, get scared at all. You know when you watch a scary movie and, you know, the after effects of it, of how the world seems a little bit more scary. That's how it seemed like for me when I got after the screening of Annabelle Creation. You know, I think it is in a serious debate that this could be the scariest film in the Conjuring universe. But you know how films are nowadays. They're subjective, you know, anyone can have any kind of order. You know, for all we know, you know, someone can like the first you know, Annabelle movie more than like The Conjuring 2 or something. You know, film subjective. But I gotta say, this movie had tons of great scares. For me, the jump scares worked and didn't work at times. For example, like in the first act, I felt like a lot of the jump scares were just like thrown in just, you know, give you a little scare. But it didn't really feel like they fit in well. But you know, uh, the jump scares like in the second act, that's when they really started to work and I like that a lot. Overall though, they did a decent job with them. And some of the other uh, side dynamic characters were pretty creepy, but I'm not going to get into them because like I said earlier in the review, those are maybe considered as spoilerish, so I'll talk about those at the end. But for now, let's talk about this crazy looking doll. I thought the doll was quite terrifying. And the thing I always liked about this doll is it moves, but we don't actually physically see it move. Like, we'll be looking at it on the screen and the doll will be right there. And then the camera would move away. And then the camera would shoot back to where the doll was. The doll is not there anymore. And I like how it moves, but we don't actually get to see it move. And I think that does build up more suspense. And if it was like, you know, Child's Play with Chucky, and we actually saw Chucky get up and move around, which I did enjoy Child's Play, it was a great series, but I think it wouldn't have been as good if like that's what Annabelle did. I think they did it right in, in this movie especially. And I think this had a great combination of cinematography and sound design throughout the course of this film. For example, um, there was a scene where these two little girls are under this blanket and you can see this like little shadow behind uh, or on the other side of the covers for that matter. And there was like sound that just started like getting up and like creepy soundness. And it just started building up the tension inside you. And there was a lot of scenes throughout the, the course of the movie. And I enjoyed like just about all those scenes. Now let's just talk about the performances for a sec. And I don't know why, but it seemed like the performances from not all, but a lot of the characters got like gradually better from the start of the movie to the end. And I don't know why that was. I thought it was kind of weird. When you're like an actor in a movie, you should kind of, you know, have a high note throughout the whole film. Not really gradual uh, from like your acting performance from the start to the finish. I mean, it just looks odd. I mean, I guess if we saw like a 10 season TV show, we can definitely tell the difference. But we shouldn't be able to tell the difference in a movie. I don't know if it was just me, but I mean, I noticed it. <laughs> But there was two people um, that I cared about truly a lot, 
and I thought were probably my favorite two characters were Janice and Linda and I believe they were the two youngest girls in the orphanage and they were like kind of had like a sisterly bond even though that they weren't sisters they wanted to be adopted with each other I mean they loved each other like they were sisters and they had a great relationship with each other and I'm sure you guys will enjoy that relationship with the two little girls as well and there was a lot of characters that made some freaking horrible decisions throughout this movie I don't know why but in horror movies like poor actors and characters just make some pretty dumb decisions and it gets frustrating in a lot of scenes it would show for example like a little girl being scared she'd be screaming or someone being like terrified to death or someone hearing noises or just little creepy stuff going around and I mean, if I saw that in a house or heard about it for that matter, I would get the hell out of that house and run like hell. And in this movie, they just kind of ignore it and, you know, either go back to sleep or, you know, the next day comes. They don't do anything about it. And the biggest thing that I was kind of, you know, I thought about a lot. The last 20 minutes of the film, like the, you know, the beginning of the last 20 minutes, the movie tends to rush a lot of stuff. And I wasn't a big fan of that and there's like a big climax thriller scene where like so much stuff is happening and then it just like stops out of nowhere and I'm like I, I kind of wanted more of that and it literally just stops I was like really that's it but then the ending comes like the absolute ending and you're like oh okay I see what you did there so it was it kind of confused me but then I ended up liking it in the end course. So it was a pretty fun, you know, third act ending of how they did it. I did have some stuff that I loved about this film. And unfortunately, there was some stuff that, you know, I didn't like that much. But um, overall, I did enjoy this movie. I cared about a lot of the characters. I, you know, I got freaked out a lot. I got scared a lot. It was a great horror movie. And who would have thought a prequel of a prequel would have delivered? I mean, really? Who would have thought? And with all that said, I'm going to give Annabelle Creation a B. Yeah, so with Annabelle Creation, I don't think it was quite as better as An uh, Conjuring 1 or Conjuring 2, but I think it was so much more better than the first Annabelle. And like I said in the beginning of my review, I was going to address some minor spoiler stuff. And with that being said, let's get into that. So there were some scenes with the nun and they were really creepy. I wanted it to be a surprise in case you guys want, didn't want to know if there was the nun in the movie. And there was also this character, the Scarecrow, which maybe could be in a movie coming up along the way in the Contra universe. Because, you know, the nun's going to get its own movie. So maybe the Scarecrow character may have its own movie. And there is also an extra credit scene. So be sure to stay for that. In fact, me and my friend were the only two that actually stayed for the extra credit scene everyone else in the theater left i was like really but you know i saw it so and most importantly what i thought was the coolest was there is this raggedy and doll in the film and for you, the, you guys that know about the raggedy and doll that was the actual annabelle doll in real life and man that was a cool scene i don't know if anyone in the theater else besides me knew what it was but i knew what it was and i sure enjoyed that and with all that said, if you guys enjoyed this review, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that way you can see me next time. Thanks for watching.